Hi guys, welcome back to another video. It is Ashley with our full-time adventure. Today I'm here by myself. Well, I'm not really by myself. Grayson's in bed, so he's listening to me. So I'm going to be doing a little six-month update of my burns and showing before and after pictures and just letting you know how I'm feeling. Grayson decided not to join me on this video because it's easier for me to just kind of talk about how I'm doing and, you know, letting you know directly. If you do not know about what happened, I will link some other videos because this is kind of just giving an update six months later so if you do not know anything you might want to go watch those other videos first and then come back to this one. So I did write some notes on my phone just because I didn't want to forget anything which I'm sure I probably still will but I'm going to um, just start off with a little update first on how I'm doing. So obviously there are just a lot of up and downs with this whole getting better. It's like some days I'm doing so great and I'm like oh my gosh this is amazing you know mentally physically i'm feeling amazing and then the next day i might wake up and be like really sore really uncomfortable and then it kind of just sets me up for a bad day i try not to let it but sometimes it just happens so the first thing is pretty much there still are a bunch of ups and downs and it's kind of just you know going through the motions and doing what i can because not every day is amazing but there still are really good days too i'm still really sore like my burns still hurt a lot specifically my right hand and wrist those were the deep third degree burns and the worst ones so they are taking the longest to heal and they still do hurt pretty often which is very unfortunate but i'm still seeing a lot of progress so i'm trying to focus on the progress and not focus on how much i still might be hurting with that being said my right hand and my ankle still do not have full mobility I can push myself as much as I possibly can but it still is not comfortable and I do not have that full range of motion so I'm really hoping in due time with stretching and just continuing to heal that it will get better but as of right now I just don't have that full range of motion that I'm looking for I'm still limited on a lot of activities. I still cannot soak in the water, which is kind of unfortunate because I'd love to be able to go swimming and go to hot springs and go to the beach or whatever it is, and I still can't do that. So that's obviously been a little bit hard feeling like, you know, I can't do everything. And with that also comes the sun, which I've talked about a lot. After being burned, you're not able to be in the sun for a minimum of a year. And it's kind of like even once you are healed, you have to be a lot more cautious than people who have never been burned before, which is really annoying because I love the sun. I love being able to just sit out in the sun and, you know, not have to worry about it. But it's something I'm kind of always going to have to keep in mind and always worry about to an extent. So that can be really hard, especially because I love to hike and I love to do everything outdoors and while I'm still able to do that it's just a lot harder I have to wear a lot of sunscreen have to make sure I'm wearing SPF clothes and everything even if it's hot outside I can't just do a hike in a sports bra like I used to be able to do but again the best thing I can do is just try to focus on the good the fact that I'm even able to be outside and be doing these things that's how it helps me just kind of keep myself calm and you know just remind myself of the good I have talked a lot about how my burns are very temperature sensitive since the nerve endings were burned burned off everything is hypersensitive so the hot feels burning and the cold feels super cold and also another thing that I notice when I am in the cold is like the blood rushes to my hands it rushes to my ankle it rushes to all my burns and it makes them feel really heavy and like swollen um, and it's kind of funny because we've been in the heat for so long that I've just been feeling that hot sensation and now being back in the cold it's like I realize how much different it you know feels in the cold also like how it gets all swollen and purple and itchy like uncomfortable and so is the heat is very uncomfortable so it's really hard because unless I have that perfect temperature my skin is not happy <laughs> so that was basically like a gist on how I'm doing and just some little updates so I always try to be as vulnerable with you guys as I can because I know the people that are watching our videos for the most part have good intentions and really do care about how we're feeling. So there's something that's like kind of hard to talk about because it just makes me very uncomfortable and like very upset. I came to join her this time. Grayson came to join me, give me some comfort. There have been people on social media who have commented about my skin. A lot of times they're just curious and I can tell it's, you know, very innocent. But there have been times where people have commented stuff that I'm like, oh, you know, that's not the nicest or that was rude or whatever. But honestly, it didn't really hurt my feelings too much because I know a lot of times the things that people say over social media, they'd probably never actually say in person. <laughs> But it's kind of weird because within the last couple weeks when I feel like, wow, I'm getting so much better, I'm feeling more confident, more comfortable, you know, whatever it is. I've had two different people say like very hurtful things in person that, you know, I don't even know at all. So it, 
it's like on one hand of course it's like okay I don't know them I shouldn't let it hurt my feelings but like because I do have such serious PTSD um, the little things kind of like do hurt my feelings and it's not even really like that little like the things that people said I don't really care to go into it it's kind of just stuff that I can only really talk to Grayson about and my therapist about because that's all I really feel comfortable with right now but it's just hard because it's like I would never go up and approach somebody like let's say they didn't have an arm I wouldn't go over to them and be like you don't have an arm like can I whatever it is like I don't really what happened to you yeah. yeah it's like I don't go over to somebody and just like oh what happened to you and like the fact that people have done that and have been like made rude comments about the way I look like it makes me like want to like close up and not share anything so I also think about it like just to chime in on that it was also like when we had Brayden people didn't even know Ashley was like burned or anything we would hike when we first got Brayden back and people would be like oh you know your dog like has a thing in his foot or you know your dog's limping you know your dog's this I don't like look at you know and a good example I was telling Ashley like it doesn't people don't know so it like doesn't really make me that upset because I understand it makes Ashley upset and it makes me upset in terms of like for humankind for for human beings because it's it's what how do you have the audacity to say something like that to somebody you don't like she said you don't go to a guy with no arm and say wow you have no arm wow like Right. Can I like do that? Can, you know, why Why do you have no arm? How do you have no, what is that? It's, you don't go to a person with a prosthetic and say, wow, fake leg, nice fake leg. You don't yeah. do that. Unless you're being genuine in your comment, you're like, wow, that's like so motivating that you're here and you have no arm, but you're still at the gym or you're here and you're hiking with one leg. There's different ways to say things and nobody, you know, the way that these people have said stuff to her, it's just like, it's not a motivating thing. It's like, it's almost as if like a backhanded, not compliment, but just like, they're trying to be curious, but the way of being curious is just very rude. And then also I think a lot of people, and I don't know if she's gonna go into this, but I'll go into it for her, they're very insensitive to the topic. So when this all happened, we didn't we didn't know what trigger words were, we didn't know, what, like we knew they existed, but for us, we didn't really have them. Mm -hmm. And so, trigger sounds, trigger words, so on and so forth. And you know, people use words interchangeably and don't really know what they might be for us now or sounds might be for us. And it's just, words and sounds and it's just you know kind of mind-boggling slash like opening for us to really understand that like not only do other people have trigger words i don't want to make it seem like oh we're you know we're the only ones with trigger words or trigger sounds but other people do and like just like saying those comments to people you need to be careful yeah like you know some people might use the word like oh like oh i got i don't even want to use the like they use the example but it's like you spend a lot of money and it's like oh they shoved it up my or i got this it's like but what if somebody like you're talking to somebody and like they were raped i guess that's the word i would say or they were harassed or they were this and like that those are serious things to think about you know you never know what people have been through when you're talking to them and it's very very important to be cautious because it's not like i don't think that people need to be sensitive like we're not very not sensitive people but when it's certain topics we're very sensitive people and like we're very heartfelt people and i think it's important to like really get to know somebody before you just use words that are like yeah, they might be okay with you, but they might not be okay with somebody else. So, like, really just to scratch the surface, somebody basically was like, oh, what happened or whatever. And I could tell, like, they, you know, they didn't really seem very genuine. They just seemed like they wanted to get the answers. And so I already right off the bat was uncomfortable. And two, I was working out. So I really wasn't in the mood to talk about it at all. So I basically just said, oh, you know, like, I don't really want to talk about it right now. And he was like, well, you should be more open. You should be able to talk about this. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm very vulnerable and very open with people who I know that, like, want to hear. And that's why I'm even posting this. I was contemplating it. I put it on Instagram and, like, an overwhelming amount of people said that they wanted an update and stuff. And that's why I'm sharing. Like, I wouldn't be sharing if I felt like, I don't know, like, people weren't responding right or if I was getting, like, hate or whatever it is. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, so just, I mean, overall, just everyone just needs to be cautious with what they say you know to an extent it's like no one needs to baby us but like to come up to me or to come up to Grayson or whatever and just say something that's I don't know I don't even really really want to get into it anymore but just be cautious with your words everyone <laughs> and that's to everybody yeah not only to us that's to everybody you see that but you might see they have some type of burn or no arm no leg mental illness whatever it may be be a bit be better yeah be better. be better that's Just it be, be better. better have some respect not only for them but for yourself because it makes it look like you it makes it look like you have no respect for yourself when you disrespect others when you first meet them or even if you know them and start to disrespect them it's like 
for what? So I'm gonna go into kind of like more positives now and like what's helping me and you know improvements I'm seeing and stuff. So I have been doing therapy every single week. I don't, I don't think I've missed one week literally in the past probably five months. I think probably a month after the accident around maybe two months. I started therapy and it's not sponsored by BetterHelp. I wish it was because it's amazing. I love it so much. Especially like being on the road and stuff and not being able to physically go to a therapist. It's been literally the best thing for me. I think it's very helpful when you're struggling with something to you know talk about it with a professional because as much as I can tell Grayson and he's very supportive and very helpful in every way he can he can't really give me like the strategies I need to overcome it and to get better so the therapy has been super super helpful just having somebody who you know listens and is really supportive and really helpful in every way so that has been such a plus and I'm I don't really know where I'd be if I didn't do the therapy so I'm really glad that you know, I said I wanted to do therapy and Grayson was like, that's the best decision, you should probably do that. And I'm just glad that like he supported it because I don't know if I really would have done it if he didn't support it because I don't know, maybe I would have been nervous or felt like something was wrong with me. But I don't think like, I think everyone probably could, you know, better from therapy whether you've gone through something traumatic or not. I think it's just very helpful and very healthy to do therapy. So another really positive that I've been super happy about is some of the burn areas that are healing are starting to get hair grow back on top of them, which I know probably just sounds like, okay, whatever, who cares? But for me, it's like amazing because when everything was burned, obviously there was no hair, all the freckles were gone, everything like that. So I'm starting to get hair growth back and then I also am starting to get some new freckles, which is kind of funny because I'm getting freckles in places that I've never even had freckles before. So it's kind of just interesting to see how that works and I'm like not really sure why that happens. But I guess because it just burned them all off, it was like, okay, you're going to have freckles, but you're going to have them in different places. So it's just really cool to see that. It's been making me, you know, happy being able to see the improvement. Really, overall, I'm just really excited to be slowly, you know, being able to get back into regular things and, and seeing my skin start to heal and just looking back at how far I have come so far. So, speaking of how far I've come so far, I'm going to be sharing some photos with you guys from you know the accident in the hospital and then some photos from six months from the accident by the time I'm filming this it's already been like six and a half months but I do have pictures from the six month mark so I'm gonna be sharing those photos and if you do not want to see the photos and if you're gonna get grossed out I would highly recommend clicking out now because it is hard to see and it's really hard for me to share but again I'm just trying to be vulnerable and I know that if you're watching this and you've watched this far that you you know you do care and you do want to see and that's why I'm sharing these photos so I'm gonna close it out here and I really appreciate you guys for watching thank you so so much for your support and for your love if you do have any further questions you can either DM us on Instagram and I'll get back to you or you can literally drop them in the comments comments here and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability so I appreciate you guys and again the photos are coming now if you don't want to see them I click out now bye okay so here are some photos from the first day I was in the accident this is my right hand this is going to be three months after and then around the six month mark and this is the underside of my hand the same right arm three months ago six month mark and then we have my left hand in the hospital the day of three months after and then the six month mark and then my face this is actually the day after I was there because the first day I didn't want to share and then I didn't have any from the middle but this is the six month mark same with my neck the six month mark and then this is the back of my neck. And then you can tell it looks a lot better. This is my side. And then three months after. And then the six month mark. And then last is my right ankle. and then six months. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I'm sure it was probably pretty hard to watch. It was super hard for me to even put this stuff in here, but I do appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video.